Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to today's Partner Web Conference. This is Fast Track Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operations Tech Talk. Today's topic, Extending Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operations with Power Apps. My name is Janice and I'm going to be your moderator today. We are broadcasting this web conference through Teams Live Events and the audio can be heard through your PC speakers. Today's web conference is being recorded on behalf of the Microsoft Corporation. If you do not consent to be a part of a recorded session, we ask that you please disconnect at this time. Attendees may access the web conference recording within 48 hours via the same registration link that was used to attend today's live broadcast. If you have questions for the presenters or need support, you can turn on the Q&A panel by selecting the question mark icon located in the upper right hand corner of your screen. We do have presenters standing by to answer your questions throughout the session. Now moving on to the presentation. Presenting for us today from Microsoft, we have R&D solution architect Severin Bach. And joining Severin on Q&A, we have R&D solution architects Suvita Shashi Kumar and Mark Didier. So without any further delay, Severin, welcome and thanks for joining us. Yes, thanks, Lorene, for introducing. Um, my name is Severin. As Lorene said, I'm working for Microsoft as an R&D solution architect. I am very happy about to speak uh, today to speak about Power Apps and finance operations. So let's see what the agenda will be. Um, first of all, before I'm starting, I will speak about the Microsoft Power Apps platform in general. The next step is um, introducing to Power Apps. We will have a look how it, we will have a view how it looks like. Then we have a quick walkthrough. After that, uh, we are going to create a Power App on behalf of finance operations. Um, the next step will be um, showcasing how to embed the Power Apps into finance operations. And then um, I'm very happy to show you some sample scenarios, how you could use the functionality we, we did. It. Um, yeah, the last point might be administration things, um, licensing and um, important resources. So that's the agenda for today. I hope you will enjoy the next minutes and um, I will proceed now. Good. Um, let's speak about Microsoft uh, Power Platform. Microsoft Power Platform sits next to um, the business applications. Uh, we are calling it Dynamics 365. Sits next to Office 365 and uh, could be used as standalone apps. So, and within this Power Apps, within the Power Platform, you will see um, three main areas. One area is Power Apps, which will um, enable you to create um, small business apps which are running into your organ into in your organization. And the second area is Microsoft Flow, which is helping you to create workflows to approve a record, to react on email on the incoming email. Um, it's not made for high volume integration, but you know you can move one data one record to another application if you like, and can have an improvement in the background. And then the third area is Power BI, which is able to create beautiful dashboards. Um, and these three apps are inside our Microsoft Power Platform. Microsoft Power Platform is on trust on, on Azure. So within these apps, you are able to connect to, to other applications inside our Azure platform. All right, so and today we are concentrating on Power Apps. So Power Apps is, um, is, an, is a framework which will help you to build high productivity business apps, um, which you could use to connect your to your data sources and um, yeah, to implement in your processes you're running. Microsoft Power Apps can be accessed via, via the web, so you only have to go to powerapps.microsoft.com and you're ready to go. I will show you in a bit how it looks like. Okay, um, what to do in Power Apps? Um, business Power users can create and, and, con and use custom business apps across platforms using Excel and PowerPoint skills. So that means um, we are not speaking about um, a high skilled developer. We are speaking about um, yeah, a power user, a power user who is able to create connections, to create connections to your data you're already using in your environment. Um, you will see there are native connectors available which you have to select. You have to know the credentials, the user, the password, and then you're ready to go to access your data. Um, and the power user um, has to be the possibility to work with the um, um, to work with uh, to create forms, right? I mean, um, it's it's designer like this where you can have where we see in the middle a power app which you will create and you have some properties available. I will show you in a bit. And we are speaking about um, without writing any code. Um, that means it's not 
it requires low code, no code skills. So in some areas, when you are digging into the deep of power apps, you will have to have the possible the, 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 the um, experience to write complex formulas, but that's only for the for the uh, complex scenarios. I will show you in a minute um, how it looks like. So low code, no code scenario, no real developers needed. Um, and then the last point is um, Power Apps is enabling you to share this app within your organization. OK, so you have to have a user inside your organization and then you're able to access to to start this Power Apps via the Power Apps framework. OK, so um, users from outside of your Active Directory is not able to use the app. So you have to have an, an user inside your organization. All right, so have a look to the connectors. So at the moment we have about um, 230 up to 280 connectors available. So on the right hand side, you will see a lot of opportunities uh, which you could use to connect um, yeah, to connect your data. So having a power app which is connected to multiple data sources and then combining this data in an app and um, yeah, implement it into your business process. Um, it's possible to connect to on-prem. So we are speaking about on-premise data gateways to connect to your local SQL server. Um, it's possible to write own, an own connector. When you do have an idea, reach out and, and try to build your own connector. Um, yeah, and this is how it goes. So you have to have a connection and with the connection, you get the data in Power Apps. And when the data is in Power Apps, you can create formula around the data and um, start building your application. Good. Uh, this is somehow the designer. Um, so you can draft forms and screens. Um, it's in the middle. What you see is what you get. So you can design an app directly in, in the in the web browser without writing any code. And it's about dragging, drop, clicking on an element, and then you can work on the properties on, on the right hand side. Um, you could add business logic here. You see when you're thinking about Excel. Um, you can you can enter some some formulas if you like. Um, you could take advantage from other device capabilities. That means um, using the camera, using GPS, or using the digital ink if you do like. And and for me, it's somehow a mix between Excel and PowerPoint. So um, we yeah. are we are ready to use it. Okay, and um, when you create an app, um, you have to have the Power App uh, app on your on your phone which is available for iOS and Android. OK, so you have to install an app and then you have to register inside the Power App and then um, you will see the apps which are shared with you. So it looks like this. Um, so the main message here is you don't need to register your own app into an App Store or going to, to the Google Play Store and try to register your own app. It's, it's not necessary. You only have to download the Power Apps app inside the Android Store or, I, or the, apps, uh, the Apple Store and then you can go ahead. Um, and beside this, you can start the app in the browser. So when you're thinking about a tablet, you know you can go directly to the browser and start the app. Oh, all right. So that's about the introduction about Power Apps. Now I'd like to showcase you a little bit how it looks like, and um, we are starting with a walkthrough. All right, I'm going to my uh, environment. So um, that's Finance Operations, that's Power Apps. So, um, and this is how it looks like. So you're starting where is the, um, on the home screen, you reach this page when you're going to powerapps.microsoft.com. You have to sign in with your, with your account. And when you're signed in, you see a starting page uh, where you can move forward. Um, let's try just to create an, an empty app that you see um, what it is. Going to, uh, to Canvas app. I'm just creating making app that you see um, how the designer is, looks like. In a bit later, I will start. Um, I will start from data, so we see um, another way of creating an app. So this is basically um, the screen um, which you will see in the app. At the moment, it's it's empty, right? And when you like to create an app, you can just start and saying, okay, let's let's put in here a label, and um, you could start editing. Hey, um, hello, welcome, right? You can just start and and putting some controls in it. It depends on what your app should looks like. So with this, you you can choose elements you like to see. Here might be data table, but for data table, you need to have a data connection to see which data you like to show here. So this is just a very a very fast going in um, a very fast example how you could move forward. On the left hand side, you have here an um, 
an overview about the elements you do have inside. Uh, we are strongly recommending to rename your elements. So do not work with screen one and do not work with data table one. It's this is not not good when you like to maintain it later on. So when you when you send it to a third party or when you send it to another resource which is supporting you, they should know what it is. All right. And um, on the right hand side, you have some um, properties available. OK, so uh, this is just as an introduction, a short walkthrough when you'd like to create an app. Um, the Power Apps uh, platform, the Power Apps overview itself. Um, so you see the recent apps you are working on. You have beautiful um, opportunities to go into the details um, to learn. OK, so blogs are available, guided learnings are available, the community is available. So have, just have a look and try it out by yourself if you like. Um, and that's it for now at the moment. Um, I will go back to the um, to the presentation. What's next? And the next step will be that we're creating a simple app, a simple app based on uh, finance and operations. So that means I'm again going to Power Apps. I'm going to the home. And what I do now is I'm not starting a blank app from Canvas. I'm starting from data. All right. So I'm just choosing here, make an app. The designer is starting, and and now the designer is is waiting. Uh, for me choosing which data I like to use. OK, and we see it's CDS um, Dynamics 365, which stands for customer engagement or SharePoint, OneDrive, Salesforce. Uh, OK, and you can click on the on the arrow here and you will see the other uh, available connections you created. When you go to new connection, you will see the list of all connections which are which you could which you could create. Um, in my case, I will use an existing one, the Connect for Finance and Operations. I'm just click on it, and now the um, the Power App is having a look which finance operations environments I'm able to use. Uh, okay, so I have to select my finance operations environment. It's called uh, D365 81 SAT. So that's my environment. All right, I choose the environment, and now I see the data entities. All right, so as you know, hopefully that the data entities will be used to import export data into finance operations and therefore, yeah, we see here the data entities which are which are available. And for this case, I'm going into to search for customers. All right, customers V3, this net here I will take. I selected it and I click to connect. All right, and now Power Apps is starting to understand which kind of data I do have here and is drafting for me an, an app. So just an easy way to get an idea or to get content where it could work with. So you're not starting from scratch and, be, and, and building an app out of the blue. You're just you should. I think you should start with your data and then you have something you can you can showcase directly. So and with this, um, you are you are able. Oops, sorry. With this, you are able to um, to go into the into the into the design. So clicking on, a, on an element and Let's get the right element here. Uh, where we go? I like to change the color for the blue one. Okay, I will do it a bit later. Um, you could say, okay, which kind of column um, you like to see. So, for example, account statement might be not a good idea. Um, I think the customer name might be um, might be a good idea. So, um, customer account I like to see here. All right, uh, maybe I um, like to see the name. Let's put in name. Yes. Over here. All right. And this might be an idea for all the address. Here we go. Okay, you see um the the sphere is a little bit too small. You can just drag it and then it's it's big again. You can give it a title. I'm calling it my customers. Um now it worked. <laughs> Uh, I can change the color to, to to gray or to red. I mean, just choose whatever you like. I'm taking here gray, and then on the buttons, um, you see what is what is happening. So navigate to detailed screen one. For those who reviewed what I'm doing, you see or uh, well, what we got. Uh, we got one screen for showing, so browse screen. We got a screen for uh, a detailed screen to see details. Right, this is a detailed screen. And we see a screen for editing, so screen where you could edit, where you're able to 
where you are able to add something. All right, and, and that's all. So um, let's get started. You, um, you have, do have the possibility to, to preview the app and let's do it. This would be the app, how it looks like. Um, this is my customer, 001, and um, you can click on it to see the details. And if you like, um, you could change um, the informations. And to showcase this, I'm going to the customer accounts. All right. Let's have a look. It should be 001 as a, as a customer account. Probably not the correct one. At the Oops. I'm sorry. <laughs> Like this. All right. So customer group is 10. Um, I'm going to my example again and saying editing. And let's do 90. All right. And then you can save data. So Power Apps is able to read data for other finance operations and is able to save data back to finance operations via the data entities which are provided. Okay. And this is just an example. Um, I'm refreshing normal screen and you will see it changed to 10. Okay. So with this, with this easy example, you're able to create an app based on data saved in finance operations based on an entity structure. Um, you will get an, oh, this was my crap example. You will get an, um, a default app, which you could use as a starting point, okay? Um, to show customers, to show sales order, to show items, to show something which you like to get on the mobile phone without a crazy effort in the background. Okay, so um, this is just an example. The next uh, step might be um, that you are saving the app. You have to provide a name, uh, my app uh, for customers. Uh, you can save it and then you have to share it. All right, so that's, that's how it goes. I'm not, I'm not saving it here, I'm not sharing it, but you have to understand when, you're, when you save the app, you, have to, you, you can publish it and you can share it with the people uh, which should be able to access, to access this, um, this app. Okay, this is um, an example how to create an app based on uh, finance and operations. Let's go back to my presentation. Um, good. The next thing is I'd like to show you how to embed a Power App within finance and operations. Um, so think about the requirements when it's needed to embed a Power App. So it doesn't make sense, for example, to, to, to replicate functionality which is existing um, in finance operations. Um, you might get environments where it's possible to, where it's needed to extend the business logic, um, to extend something which is very hard to write inside finance operations, the process which is running outside. So think about what might be a requirement to, em to enable Power Apps for it. So you can embed a Power App into a form, into a menu, you can pass in a parameter. So at the moment it's possible to, passing one that value. So only one value you can pass at the moment. We are aware of this, it's inside the backlog, product team is working on it to change it. So expecting something new. Um, you can sharing an uh, embedded Power App and developers can, can control uh, where you are allowed to embed an app. So um, that's how it looks like when you like to embed. And I like to showcase you how it is. Let's go back to my environment. Um, I'm going to my finance operations environment and um, I will show you an example for um, internal support cases. So this example is about, um, yeah, let, 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 let's think you, you, you do have a customer which is live in finance operations and um, you're using the DevOps in the background to track support issues. So for this case, um, I go and, and creating a support ticket. So I go in here to support and saying, hey, oh, I need support. I need to create a ticket. Um, I just saying self service uh, failed. OK, um, I'm acknowledging and I'm submitting. Oh, this is good. Need urgent help. Yes. <laughs> Uh, all right, then you can submit. Ticket is submitted. In the background now, Finance Operations is accessing your DevOps project, which is linked via LCS. 
So in the background, an, uh, a DevOps um, task is is will be created. And what we did is um, we extended the employee self-service workspace. So um, employee self-service workspace. Um, we didn't. OK, my goal is to extend it. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. So my goal is now to to enable the, the employee, which is here in the workspace to see the status of the um, of the service support ticket he just created. So first of all, let's have a look to the um, to the DevOps. Um, if we do have um, the the item available, so I'm just refreshing here. OK, cool. That's my uh, my item I just created here um, today. I'm going in and um, and assigning it to a colleague. Uh, OK, let's let's choose Mark. Mark is, is my is a good man to do it. And. Um, push to Mark. Right, so um, save it. Good, let's see. Um, this is my my information I'd like to show. I go now to my workspace and what to do. It's quite easy. You're going to options. You're going to personalized form. You have to go on the on the right corner. You have to click on add a power app. OK, good. You have to select where you like to place the app. Then you're getting a screen where you have to give it a name. Support. Then you have to enter an app ID. So the app ID is easy to find. You have to go to your apps. You have to know which app you like to you like to embed. Uh, for this app, it's an internal mobile app we have here in the. You can go to details and you can go to the app ID. You have to copy the app ID. You have to enter it. All right, then you could choose a parameter. In this case, I'm not uh, passing any parameters because um, we will see every ticket which are available. You have to choose a thin mode. Uh, you can select which kind of uh, legal entities will be available. Um, and then you can close this. All right, I think we have to start from scratch here. OK. I'm sorry, normally this was not expected. <laughs> um, let's do it again. All right, going to options. Maybe I should not click on the legal entity button. Um, go to apps. Selecting where it should be. Support, passing the um, the app ID. Choosing thin and then clicking insert. OK, close. You have to refresh the formula. I'm just pressing here five. And then you will see, OK, we're getting a new screen, a new tab which called support. And here you see the app uh, which we just embedded. It's just a list which shows uh, items and tasks from DevOps. And then you could um, you could choose a number and you could filter for it. And th then you will see um, your task, which is created. And uh, with this, you could go further. I'm not able to see the number here. All right, this is strange. Um, normally, you will find here the, um, the 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 task which is created. We could use for failed, maybe. Ah, here it is. Um, service failed. All right. You can go with the details. You see, um, it's pushed to mark. You see my comment which I just created here, um, and then um, the user knows which is the activity, and we added some some links. For example, by clicking here on the button, you will link directly to the to the DevOps project. So this is just an example how to how to embed. If you like to move things around, I mean personalized form, you can click on move. You can choose this one here and you can try to move the um, the tab, the register into the next area that is not in, in top of. Right. This is something how I could how I could start. Um, but well, that's not the goal here now. Good. This is my, my first example. Um, by the way, there is a blog available, so all the apps which we are showing here and all the examples are shared in the blog. So you can go to the blog, you can download the apps. Um, there's a YouTube video, so uh, kudos to Sue, um, where you can see what we did and you can use it for your own to extend it. So 
you don't have to start from scratch. You could use our examples and we will share more and more examples in the future to enable you using Power Apps in combination with finance and operations. OK, um, the second scenario is um, about uh, customer feedback, which you could collect. So I'm going here to the um, fulfilled sales orders. And uh, what we did is um, we did an app um, to collect to collect the sales order feedback after it's delivered. So imagine you have a, a person which is which is calling customers and asking for feedback. And this person is now uh, sitting in front of financial operations and saying, oh, that's cool. Uh, customer, please give me the feedback. It's opening the app, which is embedded. Um, you could um, you could go to the um, to the feedback. The data will be loaded. You see the customer account. You can say, okay, uh, the quality over experience was okay. The delivery was awesome. Product quality is always awesome. And uh, thanks for all. Um, this is the feedback from the customer. You can submit. What is happening in the background is uh, we are um, consolidating the feedback inside and inside the SharePoint. So going in, um, just refreshing the site, and and you will see um, this is the sales orders which created overall experience delivery five five. Thanks all. So we are collecting feedback inside the SharePoint, and then you know we could start with this data you collected and do more apps or extend the app or whatever you like to do. It's just an example uh, what to do or how to embed Power Apps. OK, um, a second scenario I really like to showcase is um, I'm going to the details of the sales order. And what we did is we added uh, a new field which is called tracking number. So we didn't did it into our, in the real LM story. We just used the functionality to add generic uh, to add generic fields. Um, so we added a tracking number and this is a, a tracking number um, yeah, which is in progress. And we created an app to track the parcel. So it's a parcel tracking idea. Um, this is an app for it. I will delete it that you see how you could really code. You could get rid of these uh, apps. OK, you go on the D. Uh, maybe do it sl uh, slow. Personalized apps and with this you see the existing embedded apps and this you you can delete. You have to reload and then the app is gone and they have to embed it again. All right, so you don't see any app. Let's go in the details. Yes. Again. OK, here's my environment. Um, let's embed an app. Inside an app you have to click. Then you have to put the name. Tracking, you have to have an app ID. Let's I have to search in my OneNote for the app. Here we go. Ah, wait, that was the wrong number. I'm going to apps. Again, then you have to find the app you like to embed. That's a package tracker. Go to details. Go to the app here. Right. Then you have to save it. Then you have to select the parameter which you like to um, which you like to provide. So in my case, it's a tracking number. Here you see it's just Gen. Uh, we added uh, just a field without any development skills. Choosing the frame, how it looks like, and pressing Enter. All right. Now we have to, uh, you know, it's not available. We have to refresh the the screen. Okay. Back again. Going to the details. Uh, passing the number here. All right, here we go. Saving and then calling the app for tracking. So now the embedded app is opening. You will see on the right hand side um, the app is getting the tracking number and you will see where the static, where the parcel is at the moment. So just as an idea, imagine what, what might be what the effort will be to um, to build this functionality inside finance operations. The whole the whole um, LM story behind starting from Visual Studio and now um, we enable the customers to create their own apps when they are, when they change their transportation um, partner, you easily can say, "Hey, customer, you can change your your app by yourself because you don't need high high skilled development resources from me." Okay, so um, this is an example um, how to embed something. I will go back to my presentation um, because the next scenario is is coming. The next scenario is about um, cycle counting made easy.
So um, let's imagine we are in the month end or we are in the year end and we like to count our inventory. We like to know how much quantities we do have in our inventory. In the old days, you know, there's a list which is printed and, and then the list you're going into the warehouse and you have to check how much is there. You can count, uh, maybe you are able to get the average, but somehow you have to go through the inventory to the warehouse and have to select what is the, have to write down what is available. Okay, I just said select because that is now the goal. We, we built an app as an example to, um, to help you doing this kind of countings and therefore we created a, a video to, um, to show it a little bit how it looks like. So this is an app we created and again, um, this is kind, kind of fresh and uh, we will share this as well. So expecting a new blog post, um, I, will, I will show you where the blog is. Um, expecting a blog post where we are sharing this with you and you can download this for yourself. Um, okay, let's get started. Um, so inventory counting app, imagine, as I said, we are a resource sitting in a warehouse and we have to count t-shirts, we have to count shoes, we have to do our year end activity and we like to get rid of writing text down. Okay, um, so I'm just playing the video now. Hopefully you're able to see it. So you can see that count summary available and uh, we're getting started. So I'm just pausing. So at this screen we have to select, okay, uh, where we are. So uh, which kind of production uh, or which kind of warehouse uh, we are in, what we are counting at the moment. Okay, yeah, you have to select one and then you, you see the screen. So what we enabled is we enabled a uh, scan. So you could enable the camera to take a picture and to scan a barcode that the idea behind scan a barcode. Uh, the barcode we will will be checked and you will see uh, which barcode you do have, what is the size and, and, and how much you do have. And then you have to select it's good or it's crap. So to see, okay, what's the quality and you can go through the warehouse and proceed. Okay, I will start play again. And um, now we are scanning. Um, the barcode and um, okay, the barcode will be translated to the um, to the fields here. We see what it is: size five, style none, color none. All right, and we are selecting it's a good quality. Then it goes goes forward. Scanning the next um, the next one and um, it happened again. We are saying quality is good. All right, let's go to the next warehouse or to the next item and scan it. We're getting the translation of the barcode and. Um, we are counting and I mean, this is much faster than writing it down on a paper, having a pen by sight or whatever. And um, the next thing we are showcasing is imagine there is um, there's the same um, the same shoes in the warehouse, but a hundred times and we don't like to scan hundred times the same item. So therefore we, ad we added the app that you can just say, OK, um, this is this item we do have um, three times, for example. This is something which is now upcoming in the video. Okay, we are changing it to, to three. That's how it looks like. And then it's it's done, it's saved, and you can you can stop. When you're done, you will see the uh, the counting uh, summary. So this is just holding data inside the app. And um, this is we are done with the example, but you know you could start extending it. So think about um, a button uh, where you can say transfer countings into an inventory movement or inventory adjustment journal inside finance operations so that you're using an entity or that you're writing uh, writing a custom entity or using um, logic apps or Azure functions to to move data into into um, into the uh, finance operations or saving it to blob storage in Azure and then you're using the recurrent integration in DMF and sucking out of blob and pushing it into FNO. So how you're extending it, um, you know, there are a lot of possibilities, um, but we think this scenario is, is a very good one. Um, you could clear at the end and then you can start from, then you can start, um, start from scratch in the next round. So that's, um, that's somehow the idea and um, the message here is when you're thinking about creating a power app, um, think, uh, start small and think big. Uh, start small and growing big. So that's the message that you're doing. Try not to to solve the world and to solve the craziest requirements in a first shot. Try to start small. For example, getting an Excel spreadsheet and then trying to maintain this Excel spreadsheet in an app to get familiar with power apps, and then trying to extend it, move the Excel spreadsheet into a into a SQL table. 
and then you know you can extend it, extend it, um, and then you get into Power Apps and knows how to how how it's working. Okay, so this is the the example. Um, that's the last example I do have here available. A um, little bit about administration um, Power Apps. So admin.powerapps.com. Um, there you can administrate. There you have to take care about your environments. So environments. Um, that's the ALM story. Uh, when you're um, when you're subscribing to um, to custom engagement, uh, for example, you're getting a default environment where all the custom engagement data is is saved. Uh, but we would recommend not to create uh, testing test apps inside this default environments. So we would recommend creating an own environment, calling it test Power Apps environment inside Power Apps, uh, and then creating apps inside this environment for test purposes. And as soon as this app is um, is is done, and you're saying, okay, let's push it to 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 prod, you're exporting the app which saved in the test environment. You're getting a zip file or an XML file, and this file has to be has to be uploaded to the production environment where where you, the, your end users are working on. And that's the LM story. So downloading from test environment, uploading it to 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 prod environment, and then you have um, the newest version available. Uh, in the in the app. Um, in the uh, admin center as well, you can use you can work on security. Who is able to maintain my app, right? Who's able to edit? Who's able to see it? Who's able to work on it? This is important when you're when you're getting big. Um, okay, let's see um, where we are in my presentation. Um, next slide is about um, licensing and. Um, what is inside? So I we strongly recommend to have a look inside the licensing guide and uh, the pricing in the background. But when you're using uh, finance operations, um, you see it's 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 included, so you can directly start using using Power Apps. Um, another idea is app in a day workshop. I don't know who know who knows it, but it is possible to go to AKA MS app in a day. Uh, when you're going to this short URL, you will get a zip file which is um, which will be downloaded, and in this zip file you will find a presentation, you will find uh, PDF documents, and these PDF documents are labs, and these labs will guide you to create this app, device ordering app. This uh, this uh, lab is, is showcasing or is helping you to step by step using Flow, Insight, and Power App. Or whatever. I mean, how to how to put photos inside an app. We strongly recommend that you're going to this aka.ms/app in a day. Have a look through the zip files and um, yeah, try it by yourself to get familiar with the um, with the power apps. So resources are very important. Um, apps doc the power apps documentation. As always, we are telling docs is the main source. There's the truth inside. Read docs, and we are expecting that US partners and customers are going into docs and read documentation. We are sharing one to many. Um, there's guiding learnings available. The Power Apps community is strong. Um, there are customer story stories available. Um, you know, go to the go to the go to the links, go to the roadmap, go to our to our scenarios we, we shared already. Um, that's the end for my presentation here, but um, we do have time left. Therefore, I like to go to my uh, to my browser again, and I will show you the blog. So um, this is what I talked about. Um, that the blog it's inside the um, Power Apps of Microsoft.com on the normal blogs, and there Sue um, created um, the scenario. So you can have a look. You can have a YouTube video uh, how this um, customer feedback uh, app is working, and then you can. You can you can download the app by yourself and and try to start doing it. Oh, this is just a description. Um, and and another example is on the is on the other other, other hand right. Okay. Um, a little heads up for you. Um, we know that uh, Power Apps in combination of finance operations at the moment um, we are all trying to get ideas how we could use it. So what is a really strong business scenario as we as we showed in the video. So what is really helping us to to get um, to get a value in creating an app, which is inside our business process. So and therefore um, we will we will send out a survey uh, in a bit. So this will be survey. This is somehow a survey which is in draft at the moment. 
So this server we are sending out via we are the blog, we are LinkedIn, um, we are Twitter um, to ask customers um, who really like to use Power Apps uh, in combination of financial relations to ask for the scenario and we like to know if you need help or not. So this is just a call out for those who are live, who are live in finance operations and, and uh, in front of implementing Power Apps and we like to know um, maybe there's opportunity for us to engage with you just as a hands up, as a, as a heads up. Okay, so um, that's all for the moment um, for me. Laureen, do we have any questions? Um, anything which I should show again? Uh, because sometimes I'm quite fast as I know myself. Um, what do you think? It's all good, uh, Seth. All right. So there's no question I should I should um, show here in this uh, tech talk. Uh, Janice can uh, take over and she can uh, put in the survey and uh, we're also answering some questions here, so uh, we'll do that. OK, um, maybe maybe one last sentence about power apps and finance operations. Um, so um, the challenge will be to find um, what we are calling it the app man. So to find the resource who really like to drive the app evolution. So it will be very hard um, to say you do, you have time, you're a resource, you're now doing power apps. So the idea should be that you really find a guy and normally this guy is sitting not in a partner, is sitting not in the IT team you got. Um, normally this guy is sitting somewhere in the background. It's some uh, a person who really like to create apps by him, himself. And that's a person you, you you need to find, and that might be your app man who is really driving the story, who is going into the documentation, who is watching tech talks like this, who is who is who do have the ideas, and um, this is the app man you need to find on a customer site, uh, which is driving, and then you can go as a partner and support this guy moving in the right direction. Um, and as I said, in the in the middle, um, think small. So starting with a small idea and power apps, getting familiar with it and then growing big and extend the apps um, that you at the end have a beautiful, beautiful um, story around uh, which is solving your business requirements quite well. OK, so uh, when there's no further questions, um, I should answer in this tech talk. I'm, I'm done for now. Thanks you to to listen and um i'm giving you 50 minutes back huh? all right thank you severin all right ladies and gentlemen uh we do have some time here yet so feel free to go ahead and submit any new questions into the q a panel and the uh, presenter team will continue to answer those in the meantime i'd like to uh, point out a link that i posted in the q a panel that's a link to a short survey for this web conference and we ask that you please take a moment before logging out to access it we hope that you found today's information helpful, and if you enjoyed today's web conference, have feedback on how we can provide you with a better event, or you'd like to submit topics for future web conferences, this is your chance to let us know. The survey scores are on a scale from one to five, with five being the highest score possible. And that is going to conclude today's web conference. Attendees can access the web conference recording by the same registration link that was used to attend today's live broadcast. I'd like to extend a big thank you to our presenters, Severin, Mark, and Savita, and thank you audience for logging in and joining us today.